Uh, now joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group hotline, good work by Graham getting him hooked up, our very own Dennis Cox, who was out in Phoenix uh, taking in the action uh, of, of the Final Four and the preparation going into it. Uh, Dennis, I just explained all the reasons why we need to ask you this question. Uh, what's the vibe check on NC State? How are they feeling? How are they moving? Uh, they were themselves. Uh, they're, they're typical, upbeat, like the individual guys that you think of. Casey Morcel, when I talked to him, his very much stoic, you know, type demeanor. Um, the energy from guys like Jaden Taylor were all what you expect to see. Even the guys in the locker room, um, like Ernest Ross and mm-hmm. uh, Snell and Breon Pass and a few other guys, at towards the tail end of the media availability in the locker room, were like doing a TikTok dance that they were looking <laughs> to post online. So like they were themselves. That was the, that was actually the thing. It's like, oh, okay, like this is this is the vibe that we saw. In Washington D.C., this is what people saw in Pittsburgh and in Brooklyn, like or not Brooklyn, but but in Pittsburgh and then in Dallas. Uh, so it's they just being themselves, really. Uh, I did see the TikTok dance on social media. This is a good time to plug it for everybody. Follow uh, ninety nine nine the fan on on all your socials. Dennis is posting all the the behind the scenes and insight that he he's taking in in Phoenix. Um, another thing I saw Dennis in the. Uh, in the social media posting is the media swarming DJ Burns and DJ Horn pretty good, uh, both from from your social media posts and the teams. Uh, how is kind of kind of everyone taking that? Does do, do Burns and, and Horn look comfortable being celebrities? And and you know, is the rest of the crew kind of uh, eyeing it up? What's 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 that looking like? I it's, it's interesting because there are uh, there's a lot of for DJ Horn. Mm. This is like a second homecoming when you think about it for DJ Horn because he played a couple of years here at Arizona State. Yep. So there's a lot of local media that were actually here talking to him for the first time this season after having covered him for a couple of years. Obviously, we know he's from the Raleigh area. So that's like a homecoming be back at NC State. But the fact that he's actually back here uh, in Arizona, just down the road from where he went to school for a couple of years, again, it's like a second homecoming for him. So there was a lot of local media uh, down here talking to DJ Horn. Uh, after obviously his success that he had here. But I think these guys are just, they, they've embraced it because they've come to expect it because it's been happening for a while. Like anytime you go into a locker room post game, people are talking to DJ Horn, people are talking to DJ Burns. Obviously, they got all these massive NIL deals and stuff that they're doing. So I think they're, it, it's, it's become something that they're used to. Um, and even with DJ Burns, like he was just like, yeah, camera's on me. I get it. Like he just gets it. He's like, people want to talk to me. He understands it. It's not like a showboat or anything along those lines. It's like nothing close to that. It's just he understands what it is. And, then of course, there are a lot of people asking him about, hey, like uh, NFL, football, and he shot that down. He's like, no chance. No chance at all my playing football. Completely shot that all down. Darn it. I wanted to see him. I want to see him in a three-point stance. Uh, Dennis Cox. Yeah, you're not going to see it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Him, him and Zach Eady would be just supersized football. Uh, our very own Dennis Cox out there in Phoenix covering the uh, the Final Four. The road to Phoenix on 99.9 The Fan is built by Mungo Homes, ranked number five top workplace in the country, building homes and dream teams for 70 years. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they're tipping their hand or if they want to keep everything kind of state secrets. Have you heard anything from NC State about how they plan to guard Zach Eady, the, 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 the big guy for Purdue? I remember Ben Middlebrooks talking about saying, you know, we just got to go out there and just be ourselves, you know, just you know, be physical, um, not back down from the challenge. That's really it because there's, there's nothing you could do to, like, compensate for height. You know, Zach Eady is, as having stood next to him, is all of, like, the 7'3", seven, 7'4", seven, that he's, he's built to be. Uh, he is a very large individual. But I, from hearing those guys, like, you know, we have a strong front court too. You know, they also have to deal with us. Um, which I thought was a pretty interesting mentality, especially hearing from Ben Middlebrooks. Like, hey, that, they have to deal with us, too. It's not just us dealing with them. Like, they have to deal with us, too. And they feel like they have a really strong front court, uh, does NC State. So it's, it, was, it was interesting to hear, um, have that mentality. It's like, yeah, okay, we had to face you, but you got to face us. Well, okay, let, let's flip the question then. I know you were uh, this afternoon in, in, in Purdue's uh, media availability. What is Purdue saying about DJ Burns in, in that front court? Uh, it's interesting. Zach Eady uh, was asked about it, uh, especially because you know, there's Klingman, there's Eady, uh, there's obviously DJ Burns, and he was asked about the big men as a whole. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like a revival of the big men, at least when it comes to college basketball. And he was asked specifically about Burns, and he said he spoke pretty glowingly of him. He's like, you know, I feel like some people might be treating it as like a sideshow, like, oh, here's this big guy 
um, you know, doing these things. And it's like, you know, he's, you got to look at him. He's like, this dude's a legit great basketball player. Like he's a great passer. He has great touch around the rim. So he spoke very glowingly of him. It's like, Oh, okay. Like he understands that there's a challenge on guarding DJ Burns with his ability to finish around the rim, his passing ability, like they, they're respecting him as a basketball player, not just the, the cool, fun story that a lot of national media is making out to be. Like, no, you got to deal with him as a basketball player, and he's a legit threat. Uh, Dennis Cox, our, our very own, following the, the Final Four in Phoenix, joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline. The Purdue story, like, I, I don't want to just say vibe check again, but uh, as somebody that, that covered UVA the following year after they uh, lost to a, a 16 seed, then they won the national championship the following year, at every step along the way the following year, it was the the most talked about thing. It was the hanging over their heads. It was you lost to a sweet six or you lost to a sixteen seed last year. You lost to a sixteen seed last year. Has Purdue somehow outrun that narrative after after losing last year in such a dramatic way? I'd say so. I mean, you got to a Final Four, so you kind of you can say, all right, well, last year was different. It's kind of like it's a fluke thing that happened. It happens obviously because it's happened a few times now. But I think for them, it was like. We have something to prove. They want to prove that last year was the fluke. And I think you're kind of getting that mentality or at least getting that vibe in their locker room or you're looking for that vibe check. In their locker room, it's like, yeah, we're supposed to be here. And we should have been here last year, but we let it slip in the opening round. This is exactly where we're supposed to be. A very very business-like uh, attitude, it felt like, from, from Purdue going in, into their locker room. There's like, yeah, we have something to prove not only to ourselves, but to everyone out there, that this is where we're supposed to be. All right, I'm going to hit you with my safety net question. Uh, what what are we missing? What was said that, that surprised you or said that, that you really think someone who isn't in Phoenix wouldn't pick up on when we're consuming everything going on there uh, at the Final Four? And, and I, I will add the caveat, aside from the hotel waffles that you taunt us with on, on social media every day. Uh, hotel waffles were on point. Uh, but I, did, I went around and asked uh, a lot of the guards. I, I, I got two nuggets for you. Uh, I went around and asked a lot of the, the perimeter guys, mm. hey, what was it like shooting in the stadium? Because it's <laughs> a football stadium. Um, because sight lines and stuff were different. And a lot of people, uh, several of them said, like, it took a few shots to, you know, to adjust because, especially from the top of the key, um, because that dead on shot, because there's so much space behind the basket, you feel like you're actually further away than what you really are. So you might, you know, clank one off the back of the rim or off the backboard or something like that. So it just took a few shots to kind of get adjusted to it. But I remember Jaden Taylor telling me that, you know, Syracuse sometimes has a little bit of that because mm-hmm. obviously you're playing in the dome, but, you know, they move the seats and adjust the benches or adjust the, adjust the bleachers and all that stuff. So it doesn't feel like you're playing in a football stadium, even though you are. So, like, there's a little bit of, I guess, lack of a better term, familiarity uh, when it comes to that. But I talked to Dennis Parker Jr. Uh, he was actually cleared to return uh, actually just this past Sunday. So he's actually cleared and ready to go. Uh, wow. So if, if Kevin Keats and, his, and the NC State runs into foul trouble or you know whatever it might be during the course of the game, Dennis Parker Jr. is available. So we know that he played a ton of minutes earlier on this season, started a whole lot of games. So Dennis Parker Jr. is available, something that we haven't seen in several weeks. But he's, he's available and he's going to dress and be ready to go this coming Saturday. You, you talk about getting used to the uh, the arena. Uh, did anybody think to measure the three point line? I know Westmore and, and the 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 Wolfpack women's team may uh, may recommend doing that. Uh, there were a lot of jokes about that, like <laughs> making sure everything was right where it's supposed to be. Like are these rims ten feet tall, uh, the free throw line where it's supposed to be. Yeah, there was definitely some uh, definitely some jokes about that for sure. Dennis, we appreciate you uh, as always. We'll check back in with you as we lead up to the final four and, and enjoy Phoenix. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Once again, that is our very own Dennis Cox out there uh, covering the the Final Four, the men's Final Four, as NC State prepares to play Purdue. We'll have sound that that he's gathered from those events uh, throughout the rest of the week.